Hi, I wanted to do a, a short video on the Porsche Macan timing chain cover leak, the two bolt fix. Uh, I read through the tutorials. I went through the um, install guide that Flax 6 Motorsports gives you when you buy their repair kit. Um, and uh, I looked at a couple of online videos, which are kind of helpful, but I want to cover all a couple of things that maybe they didn't. So here's the vehicle, it's a 2018 uh, Macan Turbo, the 3.6 engine. You can see I've already gotten the, uh, it, it says in the flat six in tutorial, start on the driver's side and I already got the driver's side air box off. I will tell you it's not as easy as they make it sound in the flat six tutorial. Um, there is a screw they gotta take out, a T30 that's got, um, you know, this coolant line hooked to it, no big deal. Um, then there is a T30 bolt that you have to unscrew. I kept thinking that it would come out. It actually doesn't come out. It just sticks in there. So that took me a few extra minutes. Then the tricky part, the part that's not easy is where you have these these retaining plastic retaining rods that go in and they, they only turn 90 degrees as it's a t30 torx um they only turn 90 degrees that little tab there you have to turn it outward to lock it in you can see underneath here how that mechanism works so it's only a 90 degree turn, but man, pulling them out was not as easy as what they indicated in the tutorial. I ended up having to use a fairly good set of, of, uh, of uh, pliers to grab onto there and get a hold of the top of these things and pull them out. So that was kind of hard and they say it's kind of hard to put them back in. So I'm a little nervous about that. I wanted to let you guys know that then the air tube, the inlet tube is here, you know, and you can see where these things go through the top. So uh, a little nervous about getting that back in because I've read that it's kind of hard, like that's the hardest part of the whole job. Uh, the next thing that I'm doing is the wiring harness. It actually clips up here. There's a picture of it in the flat six tutorial and it just says, oh, get a, get a, a pick or a small screwdriver and pry it off so um basically that's what i did uh the problem is so here here's my favorite tool in, my, in the world is a small screwdriver and i was really i didn't know there's a clip on the bottom of it uh it doesn't say how to pry it off it's just pry it off so it's attached in two spots i'm like well i can't get to the bottom i can't see underneath there so it must mean to to you know, take this part off here, um, you know, the top part. And, and so I did, you know, I got it off of there, but there's, there's a, a metal, you know, clip inside that. So I just wanted to let you know, you can see it here. I put it back on uh, where that wiring harness attaches. I'll just pull it off real quick because I just set it back on there so you can see. But it's just a spring clip. There you go. So that's gonna have to go back inside this plastic part uh, when I put it back on. So I'm gonna push this wiring harness back and you can then see the offending bolt um, under there. Um, there it is right there. It's kind of peeking out right above that, the wiring harness. There it is. So there is the uh, driver's side screw. Uh, you can see it in the mirror. I've got it sitting there. It actually looks like it's in pretty good shape. And I didn't notice really much oil coming from the driver's side. This might have been replaced by Porsche early on. I don't know. I did notice some residue, but it was, you know, drier. And uh, so I think the other side, the passenger side, is the one that's probably broken. That's the one that looks like it's leaking. But I'm going to go ahead and replace this one anyway. So the T30 Torx uh, socket uh, or bit that I have 
is uh, unfortunately, it's kind of a longer one. It, it's like a, uh, anyway, I'm gonna see if I can get this one to work. It may be too long, I may have to get a different one. Okay, as I suspected, my uh, impact uh, Torx bit was too long. It wouldn't let me get in there. I did have a 3 8 inch drive T30, but um, it's kind of tight in there, so a 3 8 just won't fit. So you're gonna need a quarter inch socket. Um, this was a security bit, but um, that's the only one I could find in stock in town. And it, it is still tight in there. So one of the things I did was I bought this right angle bit driver set when I was at Menards buying this uh, socket. Cause I'm like, well, that gives us, that's even a smaller head than a normal, you know, quarter inch driver ratchet. So, uh, I figured, you know, for 20 bucks, I'll buy the set and, might probably come in handy in the future. So just a thought on that. Uh, I did get the driver's side bolt out. Uh, it is aluminum. There was no washer at the top. So I know that the fix hasn't been done on this um, and it was intact. So uh, I got it out of there easily. You know, once I broke it loose, which didn't take much effort, then I was just able to back it out with my fingers. One thing that I had been told was to be careful if the bolts broke or cracked, but still holding on a little bit and you start you know, backing it out, what might happen is that it might get halfway out and then this, this bottom half would break. Whereas uh, when you first, you know, if it's all the way in there, this tip will stick out. So what I did was I bought some uh, fuel line uh, at Advance Auto Parts, some small fuel line. I just took a, one of the bolts that was in the repair kit into Advance Auto to see what size diameter you need. And uh, and so bottom line is, is if it's broken off on the, dry, on the passenger side, like I think it might be, um, a tip is to take, show you, take this fuel hose, and put it on, you know, this would be why it's in the car, while it's in the car, but take the, the fuel line and push it onto that tip and then use that to back out the screw, the bottom half of the screw if it is broken out. So we'll see if it's broken on the other side because I know it's leaking from the other side so it may be broken. We'll see if we have to use that trick. Okay, I got the, uh, the stainless steel screw in there. I will tell you that I do not know how you can get a torque wrench on that thing. This is my quarter inch torque, torque wrench and there's no way the head was going to fit in there. Uh, I did end up using this guy here. Uh, I made it so much easier and uh, I figured it's a stainless steel screw. It's not aluminum. So I torqued it as good as I could with this. Then I used my uh, quarter inch drive uh socket this and t tensioned it up some more um so i'm pretty sure we're at least at 10 newton meters which is you know not particularly uh, uh, a lot of torque so uh, i feel good about that even though i couldn't get a torque wrench on there the next thing was coming up with getting that little bracket uh, uh, back on the the loop that right there. Um, and I, I showed you earlier, there's a little uh, metal spring in there. And uh, what I had to do basically was I had to remount the screw back inside that plastic clip. And then I used this guy here to uh, put, put this tip of it right there and hook hook through there and, and lift it up and over there. So it went in pretty easy once I was able to do that. As mentioned by somebody else, getting this air box back in is kind of a bear because it's really almost impossible to get your hand down in here to do anything. So what I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to, I unscrewed these T25 uh, bolts. I'm gonna see if I can take the top off of here like as if I'm changing the air filter and see if that helps and put it in and then put that top back in later. Okay, what I did to get the air box in is I took the air box apart. So this is the filter, okay? And then this is the side 
the, the engine side and it just slides out like a door. You just pop it off. And that way you can get your hand in here, give yourself leverage to uh, get these things, but uh, those, those pins, those two plastic pins, you know, to get those things back in. So uh, there's one sliding on in and here's the other one should go down yep went down so okay so that's how uh it <laughs> makes it a lot easier than trying to get that uh hose to hook back up with the air filter in so i got the driver's side in now we're going to go to the passenger side and i'm just going to start out by taking this uh lid off and uh pulling this air filter i think it's going to make it easier to take the whole thing out so we're just going to start by doing that. So we'll rotate these little nubs out. See that, that little notch on there? Right there. We want it to go outboard. So we'll rotate it out. It means you're only turning it a quarter of a turn. There we go on that one. And there's one right over here. The same way, uh, a little bit harder to see. I'll uh, move this out of the way a little bit. Now you can see it, I'll move it out. This is where I had trouble on the first one. I literally used this big, big pair of pliers to reach down in there and just grab the head of that thing and pull it out. Particularly easy with the one hand. This is when it would be nice to have a tripod. Anyway, the idea is you just reach down and grab it and kind of gently pull it out with these. So I was able to get them out, not too bad. With two hands, it's a lot easier. With one hand, it's it's almost impossible. But you know, that's what you're that's what you're fighting with. The, you can see where the notch is. Um, and this has a key on the end that goes into that notch. And it just slides out. It's just plastic. It's not that big a deal. It's just kind of hard to grab a hold of that. Now I've got the air box out and that's the tube that you're taking out. And I will tell you, by taking that air filter out, it is so much easier. Uh, guys over at Flat 6 Motorsports, your do-it-yourself instructions, you really need to amend those to tell the guys to take apart that, uh, that air filter box. It is so much easier. All right, so here's the passenger side. You can uh, kind of see the screw peeking out there. Let's see. Yeah, there it is, right in the middle of the frame. There you go. Take a look and see. You can see the back end sticking out there. Um, so you could grab on that if the front end is bro broken off or use that uh, trick with the rubber hose I was showing you earlier to just go ahead and thread that bolt all the way through. So as I suspected, uh, the driver's side, I'm sorry, the passenger side, the one that I saw really the oil on, um, the, the bolt is broken. I've uh, reached in there with my hand and uh, turned the, the front of the head of the screw and it turns easily. And the back side of the screw here uh, does not turn when I'm turning the front. So um, the recommendation I saw in the forums was to get this back part out first. Don't even mess with this front part because if you try, if it is still connected to the back part, which I don't think mine is, is you could actually back this out so you've got nothing to work with. So I'm going to try the rubber hose. Trick. So I've got my little, uh, you know, inch or inch and a half long section of rubber hose and I'm going to try to hook that up to the back side of that nut or the back side of that broken bolt that broke so uh so far i'm not having any luck grabbing the back side of that uh bolt i did take a screwdriver and put it right behind the head of that bolt bolt the broken half and it just pulled right out you can see it laying there next to the mirror the other thing i will tell you is you've noticed i've used a towel to stuff in to try to keep stuff from you know falling down into the engine and i don't know what it is but this car 
<laughs> that little rubber hose I had, uh, I lost my grip on it, disappeared right back up in there. Uh, and I had a, uh, a T30 bit on the other side <laughs> that disappeared. And then a um, brake cleaner, uh, little red, you know, straw uh, that came off the can <laughs> and disappeared as well. So I'm gonna have to take down the, uh, uh, the belly pan where I'm done with this and retrieve those things. I'm just absolutely amazed. It's like there's a magnet down there or something that's sucking these things down because I thought I was being smart with a towel, but it doesn't seem to be helping a whole Another lot. Another interesting thing is I pulled this out of the engine bay. Uh, you can see the oil residue around the head of that bolt. So obviously, you know, it wasn't my imagination about the leaking oil. And I'm actually kind of relieved to see this broken because the other side wasn't broken and I'm like, Yikes, I wonder if the, you know, if the driver, the passenger side where I definitely saw oil wasn't broken, then maybe we had an oil leak from somewhere else, but I'm confident now seeing this, that it's broken, seeing the oil around the inside of the head, uh, that we've got the right source of the oil. So here's the two bolts, so you can see, uh, you know, what we're dealing with, what's left in the engine, or not in the engine, but in the, the timing chain cover, you know, of this broken one that we're gonna have to fish out this back half here. Um, and all I've got this little piece to work with so I can, I'll see what we can do, but we're gonna, again, try to take it out that way. Um, okay, I got it. Uh, wasn't as bad as what I thought it was gonna be to get that back half out. I was reading online where you, you know, try to glue, put some super glue on the end of something and try to attach it to the back end here. What I ended up doing was I used this little tiny screwdriver, one of my favorite tools, and uh, basically just stuck it in through the front hole where this was and, and put pressure on the end with one hand and then turned with the other. And it got it out, uh, it came out, I don't know, two or three threads enough to where then I could go stick the rubber hose on the end of it and it had just enough to where it started, it thread itself out the rest of the way. So it wasn't as bad as I thought, uh, that worked pretty well.